to generalize a formula for the nth derivative of the function y equals x times ln of x. So we have a slightly more demanding first derivative. We'll probably write down a couple of derivatives before we even think of trying to come up with a formula here. We have to see a pattern first. And it's unfortunately going to take a few derivatives to recognize a pattern here. At least it does for me. Uh, so our first derivative is going to be the derivative of a product, x times ln of x. So it's going to be the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second plus the second function multiplied by the derivative of the first, which is just 1. And our very first derivative is going to be x times 1 over x, or 1, plus the ln of x. So not much to go on there. Let's keep going. Second derivative is going to be the derivative of that sum. So good news is no more product rule. This is going to be the derivative of 1, which is 0, plus derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x. Okay, on to our third derivative. Before we do that, it would probably be wise to write that as a power function. So of course, that's x to the minus 1, and that makes our third derivative a lot easier. It's going to be minus x to the power of negative 2. I'm going to flip-flop back and forth here. I'll go back and write this as a rational. So that's the same as minus 1 over x squared. I think it would be a combination of the two uh, forms so that we can see our pattern. So first things first, our first derivative is unique because it's the only one, at least out of the first three, that has a natural log of x in it. And of course, there's no way we're ever going to get a natural log back in our function, uh, our derivative functions, our higher order derivative functions, because of course, they're all power functions. So let's go back to yellow and we'll go to another, uh, another derivative. We're up to number four now with probably still no clue as to what the pattern is. So if we differentiate minus x to the power of minus 2, of course, that's going to be positive uh, 2. And that negative comes down in front with the other negative 1. Multiply by x to the minus 3. And that's the same as the rational 2 over x cubed. So I'm starting to see that the even derivatives in yellow there are both positive, And our third derivative, the odd one, is negative. Now keep in mind that first derivative is unique with that ln of x. So that's not going to help us uh, recognize a pattern. Uh, so our pattern is going to be exclusively from the second uh, derivative on. So maybe one or two more, and we'll start trying to, I guess, hypothesize a pattern here. And of course, we'll test it as well. So our fifth derivative, I'm going to be taking the derivative of that power function. It's going to be minus 6, x to the negative 4 power. And notice we're back to a negative. And it might be enough here. Hopefully you're recognizing these coefficients. We have 1, and 2, and 6, ignoring the negative flip-flopping there. Um, but it looks like factorials. So maybe we'll do one more, and I'm expecting that to be a 4 factorial or a 24. So this is our sixth derivative. And if we differentiate the fifth, we'll get a positive 24. There we go. It's 4 factorial. Multiply by x to the negative 5. And then I think we've got most of our pattern under control here, or at least I do. So let's see what we can uh, piece together. So we see a factorial. Now keep in mind, this is 4 factorial, so I probably should write that down. This is the same thing as 4 factorial on the top, all over x to the power 5. We've got to keep track of what derivative we're on. We're on the 6th derivative, so, but it's not 6 factorial. It's not 5 factorial. It's 2 less. So it's a bit of a guess. Of course, we will test this. But right at this point, I'm going to say my nth derivative, at least I know there's an n minus 2 factorial in there. So on the 6th derivative, I'll go 2 less than that, which of course would be 4 and 4 factorial. 24 will show up in the numerator. We're going to ignore that negative that's appearing in every other derivative on the bottom. We'll deal with that first. It's always x to the power of something. And looking at the sixth derivative, it's x to the power 5. So I think that's reasonable to suggest that that's n minus 1. Whatever your derivative number is, be 1 less will be the power of x that's on the bottom. Okay, so we got most of our pattern uh, straightened out. Now let's see if we can deal with that negative that's occurring on the odd derivatives here as well. Uh, and of course, that's excluding that first derivative, which is on its own. Uh, so our odd derivatives, 3 and 5, are negative, and our 2, 4, and 6, we'll assume 8, are all going to be positive. 
And so there's, I guess, before we deal with that negative one, I better put on here before I forget that our, our formula is not going to produce the first derivative because there's a lot of x in it. So our formula is only going to be good for n greater than or equal to 2, so from the second derivative and up. And also, you can see that n minus 2 factorial in our formula, and we definitely don't want to be putting 1 in there because we'll get a negative 1 factorial. And negative factorials are possible in math, but negative uh, 1 factorial is, is really not possible, and we don't even want to go there. Uh, and most importantly, it's not going to, even if we do go there, it's not going to help us determine an equation of a, a higher order derivative. Anyway, so let's stay clear of negative factorials and our first derivative. So n has to be greater than or equal to 2. So now to deal with that negative 1, the way to deal with it is put a negative 1 in your formula and make sure it only uh, uh, produces a negative 1 on uh, odd derivatives and produces a positive one on even derivatives. So I can put an n up here. I have some flexibility here, but I'm going to put an n. And that wouldn't work if n was able to be 1, but we just established that n has to be greater than or equal to 2. So if I put a 2 into this power, I get negative 1 squared. In Eureka, that is a positive number, a positive 1, which will produce a positive derivative. And if n is 3, um, it'll produce a negative 1 or a negative derivative. So when that power of n is even, uh, all our even derivatives will be positive. And when it's odd, from 3 and up, it's going to produce a negative 1. And all our derivatives will be uh, negative as well. So let's box this. I've seen enough. I'm happy with it. Now, of course, we'll test it one last time before we move on with our lives here. leaving you straight lines because this took so long, at least semi-straight lines. So there's our formula. Let's test it first, and then I guess we'll just go back and differentiate the sixth derivative and make sure our formula is working. So we'll keep that on the screen here as well. So if I just use my formula to find the seventh derivative, I'm going to say that's minus 1 on the top to the power of 7, which will produce a negative 1. I want 7 minus 2 factorial, which is going to be 5 factorial. And then on the bottom, we'll have x to the power of 5 minus, or sorry, 7 minus 1, which is 6. So this looks like it's going to give me a negative 1 multiplied by 5 factorial, which is 120, all over x to the power of 6. Now let's just differentiate it the hands-on way by looking at the 6 derivative. And differentiating that and we'll see how successful our formula uh, is. So if we differentiate 24 times x to the power minus 5, we'll have 24 multiplied by minus 5 times x to the power of negative 6 and 5 times 24 is uh, 120 and with that negative we get negative 120 and we definitely have x to the 6 on the bottom. So it looks like our formula works, and if you're still paranoid, you can uh, test it again. But I think we'll actually let uh, Wolfram Alpha do that for us. So here we are, it's becoming a theme in our last few videos. Let's uh, say uh, get Wolfram Alpha to figure out our seventh derivative here for this function. I guess we can spell it right. Seventh derivative, oh look, there's all kinds of other great questions there I can put on your online quiz. I'm joking. Um, seventh, maybe. <laughs> seventh derivative of y equals x ln of x. So I'm hoping to see a minus 120 over x to the power of 6. And then just to make sure we're clear on the pattern that I've pieced together painfully is that my odd der uh, even derivative here, number 8, better be uh, positive, and it is. And that better be 8 minus 2 factorial on the top, which it is at 6 factorial. And I better see 8 minus 1 is my x power at the bottom. And maybe we'll go one last one. If we put a ninth derivative here, I'm hoping it flips back to a negative derivative with a 7 factorial on the top, which that is, and a 9 minus uh, 1 power on the bottom. So formula checks out. We triple checked it. So you can use that to save you a bit of time uh, on your practice problems in your online quiz so that you don't have to do 12 or 13 or 14 derivatives of uh, x times 1 of x, just use the shortcut.